I showed my wife the last Raylib challenge and the first words out of her mouth were, can it jump? Uh, which it couldn't. So today I'm going to add jumping, so that little Scarfy can jump, and if there's time, uh, also some sound effects just to make everything a little bit more realistic. Let's get started. All right, to make Scarfy jump, we need three things. First, it needs to respond to the user input. So when the user pushes the up button, it needs to jump. Second, when Scarfy's in the air, he should fall back down under gravity. And third, he should stop falling when he hits the ground. So let's deal with those one by one. Uh, so first, the user response. If the key up is pressed or the up button on the gamepad is pressed, then let's change Scarfy's velo vertical velocity to negative Scarfy speed. That'll probably need adjustment. And this code is definitely wrong, but let's just try that out to see what happens. Uh, it's negative, by the way, because the Y axis starts from the top of the screen and, and points downwards. And, oh, of course, very simple, very simple mistake, forgot the equal sign. Should actually, oh yeah, it did warn me. Okay, and now he goes up, but he never comes down. So that's the next thing. Uh, we need to add gravity. Let's, let's add a constant up here. Gravity. Gravity changes the y axis by, um, let's just do one for now. And again, this is gonna be wrong, but let's do this step by step. So Scarfy position, Scarfy velocity, let's change the velocity. Should put it up below this. Scarfy, the y-axis velocity, we add gravity to it every frame. Let's see what happens there. <clears throat> yeah, it falls off the screen. So obviously we need to detect when Scarfy is hitting the ground. Now we're going to cheat a little bit because this is a very simple test program. So let's create another constant and say this is where the floor is or the ground. So ground position, y pos, y position is, let's make it two times the screen height, two thirds of the way down the screen. Oh no, let's make it three quarters of the way down the screen. And I think we should put, we're going to have to check this, check this twice. We only want the jump to work when, um, when Scarfy is touching ground. So let's make it, uh, is Scarfy on ground function. So we only check if the up button is pushed while Scarfy is on the ground and then we change the Scarfy speed. So let's write that function very quickly. is Scarfy on ground, and we're going to need to read the position. Let's change it to a pointer for efficiency. Ah, this is not gonna work anymore. We're going to, if we're gonna do this, we need a global Scarfy ground position. So let's move these constants out of main and just make them global. I know some purist programmers will be disgusted at that, but this is a simple, simple challenge. So let's not overcomplicate things. This works. So if Scarfy position is greater than or equal to ground y position, then we return true. So 
So yeah, if, if the Scarfy position is greater than or equal to the ground position, then we return true. Otherwise, Scarfy is up in the air. And now let's just change this to Scar Scarfy position. We're using a pointer to the Scarfy position for efficiency reasons. And then down here, so if is Scarfy on the ground, same thing again. So if the scarf if Scarfy is on the ground, then we set Scarfy Y velocity to zero. That needs to be zero. And we should also set the Y position to the ground position. Otherwise, uh, because things are never precise, he could fall par partially into the ground and stay there. So now let's set that to ground Y pause. So if Scarfy is in the air, then we add gravity to the velocity and he should fall back down. While we're doing this, we should also set the initial Scarfy position to be on the ground. Oh, we're not taking into account. Yeah, okay, okay. This this code will still work, uh, but we're not taking into account Scarfy's height. But I, I think that'll be okay. Again, this is a, a quick challenge. I'll write down the bottom of the screen. Okay. So it's not doing what I expected he would do. I have to. I have to see what happens, why that's the case. Okay, I found it. So my mistake is here. I'm, I should have looked at the warnings, the compiler warnings. I'm not comparing the Y position. I'm, I'm comparing the pointer to grand Y pause. So that doesn't work. We change that. So we're comparing the Scarfy's Y position to the ground position. And okay, at least he's jumping. All right. Not perfect though, but yeah, at least he's jumping. I think I'll pause it here and just clean this up a little bit. Okay, I'll tell you what I've done while I had the video paused. So first up, I decided I did want to adjust for Scarfy's height when checking if he's on the ground. So I've, I've made that adjustment, um, adjusted everywhere where it needs to be. So now, now he's at the height level that the ground is at the height level where I wanted it to be in the first place. So that's all working. Now there are two things that I don't like. The first one is that he's sort of running in the air, which doesn't make any sense. And you can still control the left and right directions even while he's jumping, which doesn't make any sense. When it comes to the jump animations, I don't have a jump animation, but if we look at the Scarfy animation frames using frames, if you start at zero, one, two, th three, and four. Three and four, you can use three when he's jumping upwards and four when he's going down. That should look okay. Uh, ideally, you would have a whole set of animations for, for all the different movements that Scarfy is going to have, but this is what we have to work with. So let us write that logic. All right. First up, we want the left and right keys to also only react when Scarfy is on the ground. Right now we have it so that Scarfy can only jump when he's on the ground. You can't double jump, jump while you're in the air. So let's move this out and enclose all of the inputs here, the user input checks into a single if statement. So all of this only happens if Scarf is on the ground. And let's see if that works the way we expect it to. Let's see what happens. So yes, when I push, I can, I can make him jump while running, but I cannot change to make him jump to um, move left or right while he's in the air. So that's that one done. Now let's, let's get the walking animation gone when he's jumping. Uh, have a, a pseudo jumping animation. 
So I see two things. First, we need to know if Scarfy's on the ground in our animation code. So let's move this out into a variable so we can reuse it. Now, if Scarfy's moving, then we only want to cycle the walking animation while Scarfy is on the ground. And otherwise, we can assume that we are in the air jumping. So if the Scarfy's velocity is less than zero, so if, if Scarfy is going up, then we set frame index to be Okay, I'm going to hard code it here. This is this is bad programming practice, but frame index three. Otherwise, it's frame index is four. And let's move this back out. This this line, which updates the actual animation frame that gets shown, we want that to be executed regardless. So we put that out here. So I'll, I'll clean this up later, but this is just let's make sure that it's working first. And that means once again, oh, I keep on doing this. If the y axis velocity is less than zero, which means it's going up, then use frame three, otherwise use frame four. Yes, it's working the way I want. And then when he's walking, he's still walking. And then jumping. Very good. All right, I've created new variables to replace these magic numbers. Uh, and this makes the code easy to understand. So now we know that we're using the jump up frame if the velocity is vertical velocity is up, and on the way down we use the jump down frame. And the code's still doing the same thing. Very good. So now we can move on to sound effects, and to do that we need to check out the cheat sheet. Okay, it looks like sound is relatively easy. So we can load a sound from a file name and then we can play a sound. Now I have downloaded some footstep sounds from this website here. I'll leave a link uh, in the description below. Let's go bring that into our little challenge. As you can see, I have two, two sound samples. One is a single footstep, and the other one, it's also a single footstep, but I'm going to use that one for when Scarfy lands after jumping. Let's load them in. Let's insert it in here. Sound footstep equals load sound. And I'm just going to hard code it in here for speed, development speed, and then landing sound. Let's call both of them sound. And that is the grass B. So let's have a look. The footstep sound we want to hear whenever the foot, Scarfy's foot that is, hits the ground. So that'll be this frame, frame one, and then frame four. So let's do that in code. When he's walking, if frame index equals one or frame index equals four, play sound, footstep sound. Let's see how that works. I'll probably have to deal with some errors first. Oh no, there are some warnings though. Okay, I'm not hearing anything, which means something went wrong. All right, simple mistake. I forgot to initialize the audio device, and then, of course, close the audio device at the end. If we now run it, then we will get sound. So now the next one is to add the sound when he hits the ground. To do this, we need to be able to detect when Scarfy hits the ground. So let's, before this updating of the position, let's check if he's on the ground. So was Scarfy on ground 
and we'll use the same check. There we go. And then we can insert in here if Scarfy was not on the ground, then we play sound. What, what did we call it? We play the landing sound. Let's see how that goes. That's quite fun now. Now, if you look at the code, you'll see it's starting to get kind of complicated. And I think this is as far as you should go with writing a small program before you need to think about structuring the code correctly so that you can build something more complicated. Right? We've got animation code, we've got sound code, uh, and everything else mixed together. So it's time to create some structure. However, uh, this is all we have time for today. So you'll have to wait till next time. Until then, see you later.